This exhibition features a body of work that the Ghanaian artist Pajo, born Joseph Teta Eshong, began creating in 2004. These large, painted hardwood sculptures memorialize seven of the fortresses that various European powers constructed on the Gold Coast of West Africa, now Ghana, between the late 15th and 18th centuries. These compounds were used as posts initially for the trade of gold. The Portuguese discovered it there, hence the nickname the Gold Coast, in 1471, and by 1600 gold from this region accounted for more than 10% of the world's gold trade. By that time, these fortresses were also being used to traffic human beings. The Gold Coast fortresses would ultimately become way stations for more than half of the 12.5 million Africans sold into slavery and trafficked to the Americas and the Caribbean islands. At the height of the transatlantic slave trade, there were more than 80 fortresses along the coastline of modern-day Ghana, about one every 7.5 miles. The largest ones have been called castles, as they were modeled after late medieval European castle compounds. Pajo captures their architectural details in his sculptures. The above-ground passageways, which stretched across internal courtyards, the often grand staircases that led up to them. He also colored many of the internal surfaces and the external walls of one fort, Fort Gross Friedrichsburg, in a memorable style that represents his interpretation of cobblestones. These fortresses were all constructed from stone, most of which was locally quarried, but their walls were usually whitewashed in part to protect the stone from decay caused by the sun and salt air because they were constructed right on the edge of the water. They stretched so close to the cliffs of the coastline that cargo, including people, could be loaded directly onto ships or onto smaller boats that would take them to the ships. On each of these sculptures, Pajo took care to record the less grand but deeply haunting architectural detail that made that possible. The Gate of No Return, a narrow passageway through which millions of bodies were forced. The trade conducted through the fortresses was so lucrative that they were highly contested sites. They were built with powerful curtain walls to protect from bombardment and embrasures or holes through which cannons could be fired. Over the doorways of the official entrances to each of his sculptures, Pajo recorded not only their Anglophone names, but also the history of colonial ownership, who built the fortress, but also who would go on to capture and rule it in subsequent centuries. By 1872, European countries that still had colonial enterprises on the Gold Coast ceded them to Britain, which maintained Ghana as a colony for nearly a century. Then in 1957, when Pajo was 10 years old, Ghana became the first sub-Saharan African country to gain independence from European rule. In the wake of this newly won independence, a new tradition for honoring the dead became popular among the Ga people, an ethnic group that is prominent in southern Ghana. Figurative coffins were created to celebrate the deceased by embodying an object associated with their life. From a young age, Pajo apprenticed with his cousin Kane Kwei, who is credited with growing this tradition. And today, Pajo is its most celebrated practitioner, having made more than 2,000 figurative coffins in his lifetime. He made his Gold Coast sculptures using the same kinds of materials that he uses for his coffins, hardwood and bright paint. The sculptures all bear his signature, but Pajo works with his son and other skilled carpenters in his workshop, Pajo Coffin Works. As a film in the exhibition by David Wigley shows, these large scale pieces are made collaboratively from smaller panels and beams that are nailed together, then shaped and sanded using hand tools. Some of the sculptures on view, like Fort Patience, even have lids that can be removed to reveal a receptacle that could house a body albeit a small one in Fort Patience's case. To Pajo, the form of the coffin was appropriate for memorializing sites where so many Africans experienced both physical and spiritual deaths. For museum visitors, these sculptures provide a proxy encounter with the sites they represent, which may be too distant to visit in person. Conceived through the skills that Pajo honed through his decades-long career as a figurative coffin maker, these sculptures have a multivalent power, for they bear witness to a traumatic past that defined our country and our region, but they do so through an art form born out of Ghanaian independence. 
On March 6, 2020, a week after the show opened, the museum celebrated Ghana's Independence Day with a party that attracted more than 1,500 people. A week later, the museum would close to the public due to the COVID-19 outbreak, but the exhibition's brief run and that one unforgettable night were evidence of the power of Pajo's art to bring people together, both in solemn remembrance of a violent past and joyful celebration of Ghana's enduring present and future.